Welcome to this module of Professor Messer's free Network Plus certification training course, the online training course with a satisfying crunch. I'm James Messer, and in this module, we're going to talk about the properties of cable. This comes from our CompTIA Network Plus exam, section 2.1, where we need to understand transmission speeds, distance, duplex, noise immunity, and frequency. Let's start with frequency. Frequency is really a, what we call a clock speed for a medium. There's a fundamental clock that keeps everything in synchronization whenever you're sending traffic across a network. Different topologies use different methods as they're signaling to make sure that each side is synchronized up and sending information in both ways. But what you'll find is every topology does have a standard way of setting a frequency so that everybody stays in synchronization. We usually refer to the frequency in something called cycles per second, or hertz. In the case of networking, you'll usually see this written as megahertz, which is millions of cycles per second, or even gigahertz, depending on the frequency that's required to transmit information over that medium. Now, a higher frequency generally means that you're going to be able to send more traffic across the network. That makes sense, of course. But keep in mind that the throughput of your network, which is usually measured in megabits per second or gigabits per second, is different than the frequency or the megahertz that is used to send that information across the network. Sometimes the megahertz is more than the megabits that can be transferred through a link, and sometimes it's the other way. It's the, so you have to keep in mind and look at the way that the signaling is being done on a network, and just keep in mind the frequency is the clock. It has nothing to do necessarily with how much traffic you're, sen you're sending, only the methods that's used and how often each side is able to stay in synchronization. Now that we know that there's a frequency on the network and there is a common clock that's used across the network for all the devices, let's talk about the amount of traffic that we can actually put onto the wire or onto the fiber. And we do that through Speaking of transmission speeds, we generally measure transmission speeds on a network in bits per second. It might be bits per second, megabits per second, or gigabits per second. But generally, that's how we describe it. It's almost never in bytes per second. That's a little confusing. So uh, the rest of the industry decided that megabits per second is a good descriptor of how much traffic we're sending on a bits per second. For something like coaxial cabling, uh, cabling, what you'll generally find is coax will be able to send traffic anywhere from a megabit per second or less through or all the way up to about 100 megabits per second. That's a good generalization for coax cable, but it's what we see today whenever we start to send traffic over coax. Most everybody is sending traffic over twisted pair cabling. If you have a network in your house, a network at your work place, that network probably is using twisted pair to send traffic. There are different categories of twisted pair. We talked about some of those categories in a previous module. But you can see here I've summarized for Cat3, Cat5, Cat5e, and Cat6 the total maximum transmission speeds that we can do across those categories of twisted pair cabling. And finally, there is fiber cabling. We can have a lot of fiber going over our network, and fiber can go at extremely high rates of speed. Uh, generally, we see fiber going at 10 gigabits per second and beyond. There are other types of frequency transmissions that we can put on fiber that can really take that those numbers and really expand on them using different types of signaling, using different colors of light across the fiber. A lot of interesting technologies coming from that. Generally, we see that about 1 to 10 gigabit per second, but certainly the capability exists within fiber to go much, much faster. If we have a network that's in our home office or in our facility within a building, we don't have to worry so much about sending the signal over a long distance. But as soon as you go outside the building or you need to transmit information down the street or across the city or to a different country, then you get into a number of concerns relating to networking over those long distances. One major thing you have to think about is how much signal loss you're going to have from device to device on the network. As this copper is sending electrical signals, the electrical signal will have interference and it will degrade over time. So you can only take this signal across a copper fiber so far. It's the same thing with light. Light will degrade over time and you can only send light so far. So we have to think about that signal loss whenever we're designing in these connections. Whenever we look at electrical signals, we can see the maximum distance, for instance, for Ethernet over category 5E 
100 meters when we're running at 100 megabit. So that's about as far as we would want to take it. There are people that go a little bit farther, but it's going to depend on how much you can do, how much you can send across that signal without having a degrading of that signal quality. If you go over longer distances, you have to have a regeneration in place so that you can regenerate that signal. You see that usually done by service providers, by the telecommunications industries that really have to go between very, very long distances over very rural areas. Generally, we don't need any type of signal regeneration inside of our local networks. Fiber, as I mentioned, can go over very long distances. Gigabit Ethernet over multi-mode fiber can go 550 meters. And if you go over single-mode fiber, you can really go up to 5 kilometers. So this would be great if you need to go between buildings or even if you need to go between facilities that are in the same city. You can almost reach that distance by putting fiber in the ground yourself and just lighting it up on both ends. We call that dark fiber that you might own. And you put your own equipment on both sides of that. And you don't even need a telecommunications company for that. Once you go over longer distances than this, it gets a little more complicated. You may need to bring in a third-party provider just to provide you with that network connection. There's a concept in networking called duplexing. Duplexing is one that allows us to transmit information in multiple directions simultaneously. One way that is called half duplex is one where only one side can speak at a time. You can think of half duplex as perhaps a telephone conversation. While you're talking, the other side can't be talking. You're not, not able to hear and talk at the same time. For instance, over a coax where you have that one conductor, you have to be able to send traffic down one side, and you have to wait and send traffic down the other side. Both sides can't be talking at the same time. So on a coax connection, you will always have a half duplex connection. Most modern networks, however, use a full duplex connection. You have multiple wires you can choose from, and computers are smarter than people. They can listen and talk at the same time. So one pair of those wires could be sending information out, and a pair of those wires could be sending information in, and you can do that simultaneously. You see this in copper. You see it almost always in fiber, because fiber connections are almost connected as a pair, where you have a transmit side and a receive side, and that allows you to do full duplex communication. It's almost always more efficient, especially over longer distances, primarily because you don't have to wait for somebody to talk and listen for the delay as that traffic goes over that long distance. You know, one, of the, one thing that you'll see is that all, not all networking topologies will allow you to do full duplex over these communication links. You may have to do half duplex. So you have to look at the topology you're using and the technologies you have in place and be able to choose the one that's most appropriate. Generally, you want to do full duplex. But if you can't, obviously, you have to fall back to something like half duplex. Whenever you're designing your network, one of the things you have to keep in mind is how noisy the environment is. And I don't mean noisy in the sounds that are around you. I mean noisy in the amount of electrical signals that are around you. Almost everything we do these days has some type of electrical interference that it can send out. Our mobile phones and microwave ovens and garage doors and elevators, those big motors that they use can create uh, interference on our networks. And we have to think about that. If we're putting copper cabling in, for instance, we need to make sure that we are either avoiding the interference that might come. You don't want to drape a copper cable over a fluorescent light, for instance. Or you can put shielding in the cable. Help a little bit by making sure that cable is not quite as susceptible to that type of noise. If you're running fiber, well, you don't have to worry so much about electrical interference. So you'll see very often if you're running a connection that needs to go down an elevator shaft, for instance, or go near an electrical room, you may choose to put fiber in that connection instead of copper. And then that way, you don't have to worry at all with any type of electrical interference that might come into play. There's also another side to this electrical interference you may not have thought of, and that is security about electrical signals. Electrical signals, because they put out a type of noise, are very susceptible to being tapped and listened into. And in some cases, you don't even have to be physically tapped into that cable. You can wrap connectivity devices, induction devices around those cables and listen in on what's happening and either decode the digital signal. Or if it's an analog cable, you can listen to somebody talking over that analog connection. Uh, we have common tools that are able to, through this induction method, listen in on what's going on. These devices that will put a tone on one end and allow you to find the cable in a group from this tone generator. It's something that we use just as a common troubleshooting tool. But that same methodology can be used to tap into your links. 
That's why many uh, organizations that are very secure or need security on their networks will insist on connecting everything with fiber. You see this in a lot of government installations. There's absolutely no noise that you can tap into. You can't wrap a device around it. You would have to go into the link itself and connect and disconnect into that fiber connection to be able to pull off any of that light. And so it's a little more difficult to get in there. You can't sit outside of the building or outside of the cable to listen in on what's going on. So fiber is much more secure in that perspective than anything you would have with a copper cable. Let's see how much we've learned. In this review, we've got a few questions on cable properties. For instance, which cabling type supports the fastest possible network transmission speeds? We know there's one cabling type that we can send traffic at very high bandwidths, and that would be optical fiber. Another question, which transmission mechanism allows for simultaneous communication in both directions? It's a type of duplex. Is it half duplex or is it full duplex? And if you recall, it is a full du duplex communication that allows us to send at the same time that we are receiving traffic. And finally, which zero noise cable types are used in high security environments? Very important from a security perspective. And almost always, you will see optical fiber cables used whenever you have that high level of security. Well, that's our module on cable properties where we've gone through transmission speeds, distances, duplex noise immunity, and frequency. If you'd like to watch any other free Network Plus videos, you'd like to participate in our message boards, or send me a message, you can visit our website, freenetworkplus.com.